Aloha, I'm Representative Cynthia Thielen. I represent Kailua, Kaneohe Bay area. And I'm delighted to be here today with you all to talk about something that's very serious with an expert in the energy field. I'm delighted that Henry Curtis, Executive Director of Life of the Land and Vice President, is here today with me as we are going to discuss next era and what is going to happen to our state if they are approved to buy the Hawaiian Electric Monopoly Utility. Henry, thank you for being here with us. Aloha, Representative Thielen. Well, it's um, a serious time. I mean, I think this hit everyone. I don't think people were aware of what was going to happen. And all of a sudden, this Florida corporation comes in and announces it intends to buy Hawaiian Electric. And what is this going to do if they get approval? I've, I've got to back up a minute and say this could take a year process of going through um, the Public Utilities Commission and other regulatory bodies to see whether or not this acquisition would be approved. But what would this mean for Hawaii's residents and Hawaii's renewable energy objectives? Well, first, the 12-month period was set up as part of the deal between HECO and NextEra. So it supposedly will be finished by December 3rd, 2015. Within that, though, they're allowed to extend it six months more. And the Public Utilities Commission will have to decide whether to approve it, reject it, or place conditions on it. In the meantime, the legislature this session can amend the law on mergers and specify their own set of conditions. So we're at the very, very now, beginning. Let me stop you there. Um, the own set of conditions could include um, not permitting a Florida corporation to come into town by the local entity and then terminate employees after the two-year window. Right. You, the legislature could not say, we forbid the deal, but they could say, um, there, for example, NextEra, in a previous attempted acquisition, imposed a five-year limit before they would do the management changes. Okay, so <coughs> five years before just management or management, all labor? Labor, <coughs> okay. You, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You could put many different kinds of conditions on, or you could instruct the Public Utilities Commission on what they have to look at. Okay. Okay, well, uh, the, of course the employee situation is of great concern to everyone in Hawaii that may have family members or may themselves work at Hawaiian Electric. Um, but in addition, take a look at our renewable energy goals, objectives, and our path of where we've been going. What could this do to that? Well, um, NextEra has sort of two separate operations. One is their utility operation in Florida, and one is their renewable operation elsewhere. And in Florida, what they do in their utility operation is they try to cut energy efficiency and rooftop solar down to the bare minimum. So with our objective here to make sure that our residents have rooftop solar and also photovoltaic, and that's part of the GEMS program, that um, is, we could talk about a little bit later. Right. That's going to mean those things come to a halt. Right. What the utility will prob, what NextEra would probably do, is build large wind farms all over the place, or attempt to do that, to build as many l large wind facilities as they can, and to build a whole bunch of transmission lines, either over land or under sea, to connect those. That's sort of the, what they do on a national level. So, Henry, take, I mean, compare where Hawaii was moving and what our percentages are with renewable energy, including solar and photovoltaic, and compare us with Florida, where NextEra is located, where they're domiciled now, and then what would be the differences as we move ahead? Well, Florida is a much, much larger state, mm -hmm. 
we have about 50,000 rooftop solar in this state. Florida Power and Light has 1,000. I'm not be serious. Yeah, maybe 1,500, less than 2,000. Of rooftop solar? Of rooftop solar I in mean, the entire... I mean, solar's a no-brainer. That's something that's um, manageable. The photovoltaic is more costly, but the solar is manageable, and it does a huge amount of lowering our utility bills. Right. And you're saying they have about 1,500? In, in the, the entire sta state. And this is next era. Uh, yeah, their subsidiary called Florida Power and Light. Okay. Um, is it, and, and Florida Power and Light believes, and NextEra believes, that what you do is use huge amounts of lobbying power and huge amounts of lawyering and political contributions in order to minimize renewable energy requirements and to minimize the payment of taxes. Why on earth would this corporation be the type of corporation we would like to be a monopoly in Hawaii and be in charge of Hawaii's electricity? I mean, if, they're if claiming it's going to be cheaper, but well, let me answer the first okay. one and then I want to go into the second part of that question. If you were going to be taken over by a mainland continental U.S. Um, energy firm, Next Era would probably not be the one you would want to be taken over by. There are other companies out there that are more progressive, that are more in touch with the community, and would be a better fit. However, if you wanted to squash the renewable energy industry, if you wanted to kill rooftop solar, and if you want to make a lot of money for the upper elite at HECO, the, the extreme cream of the elite at uh, HEI, the very top, the five or ten people who, who bring in the bacon, then NextEra was, is offering you a deal. Okay, so the rank and file employees. I would lose imagine, out. I would imagine here you are, you're an executive, you're either a blue collar worker or you're an executive in a Hawaii based company that has always prided itself of being local, and suddenly there's a glass ceiling placed on top that says, Anybody above this level is going to come from Florida or the, from the elsewhere. And so not only that, but the senior management has to be feeling the heat because in two years, what are they going to do for the next two years? Either they're going to try to shine or they're going to be like deer caught in the headlights or they're going to seek employment elsewhere because in two years, according to the deal, um, the entire upper management can be chopped off mm -hmm. and some of the blue collar and some of the linemen and others can also be chopped and it will all be centrally run from thousands of miles away so this can't be good from the labor perspective no no and it's I, I understand that it it just cannot be but in addition to the labor perspective which is deeply troubling um, and of deep concern to many of us, um, including you. I'm wondering what we do on the renewable energy objectives that we as a state proudly have had, have, and are trying to really promote to be one of the leaders in the world. This cuts that off. You, the legislature would have to, in very certain terms in the legislation, dictate to the utility on what direction to take. And Henry, you know that that's, that's very, that's just not realistic. That's not going to happen. It's so what, what has to happen is, is to say that this deal is not in the benefit of Hawaii. Has any other jurisdiction done that? Any other area where Netflix tried to come in and buy Next over? Next era. I'm sorry, Netflix. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's some way, some similarity. I can't think of it right we'll now. We'll make a movie about it. Yeah, thank you. And then we can rent it on Netflix. Is any any other place that Next Era has tried to come in and take over? Yes, they tried to take over Baltimore Gas and Electric. Are they similar in size to us, or much smaller? Um, well, the 
what they were trying to do was take over a company that owned Baltimore Gas and Electric, and the company that owned it also dealt a lot in uh, speculation and trading and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. That fell through. And they also tried to take over Entergy. Energy. E and anyway, the company that owns like generation nuclear power plants around the country, uh, the power in Louisiana and elsewhere, it's a large um, energy company which was comparable in size to um, ex Florida Power and Light at the time, they were called. Um, Florida Power and Light used to be owned by FPL Group which changed their name to NextEra. Okay. So um, NextEra has said, okay, we'll lower the rates for consumers. Um, but in doing that, what sort of pu what puzzled me, I couldn't make sense out of it, they're proposing to put in a billion dollar cable. That means the consumers pay for that right. cost. I mean, that isn't something that they dip into their pocketbook and pay for a billion dollar cable um, from Maui to Oahu, putting in the windmills, stopping the photovoltaic and the right. solar, and leaving it so they are in control of everything. Oh, I'm sorry, I importing liquid, liquefied natural gas, LNG, and, and, and the costs that are going with that. Right, and taking out the old um, inefficient oil burners that okay. HECO, MECO, and HELCO have, and replacing them with more efficient gas burners. So still being dependent on fossil fuel, but all those costs are picked up by the ratepayers, by the, by the consumers. Right. So what the Public Utilities Commission will have to do, and it's, it's sort of, um, it, it ha is defined, it's not defined as a rate case. They make it specific. We're not doing a rate case in a, in a merger evaluation but we are we will examine everything about short of a rate case they will have to examine the next era argument on how they will reduce rates so it, it well, won't be called a rate case but okay. it will resemble it in many ways because the PUC will have to go through all of their numbers and figure out whether it's realistic or not that they can cut rates and, and I imagine there'll be somewhere between 10 and 30 interveners in the proceedings. Mm -hmm. And those interveners will be both talking about the financial numbers and some of the risks associated with going towards the proposal by um, next era to go with LNG and inter-island cable and all that. And also there'll be those arguing that cutting rooftop solar is a bad idea. I would imagine that all kinds of companies and entities will try to intervene in the proceedings. You, you wonder how much <coughs> the rooftop solar and photovoltaic companies can take before they finally just say, we give up. And they've been our hope, Henry. I mean, that was part of the GEMS program. They, um, maybe you could discuss that a little bit with um, the public. but. It, it, that was our hope, and the GEMS program would make that technology available to renters and to lower income um, people, and then also to nonprofits. And those people are coming forward now to say, we want to be part of the renewable energy future. So in other words, what the legislature passed and what is a law is going to be um, inoperable with something like Next Era because they, they will be fighting back against any of that kind of technology. So you have to wonder why Next Era would want to have this fight. Why would a wealthy company that has twice been defeated in acquisitions, which is struggling with a, another acquisition right now, why would they want to take on this fight? And I can't understand why they would want to do that. Um, they may feel that they can one-up HECO in running over everybody that opposes them, but they are likely to have a large fight because the solar industry, both the local solar industry and the national companies that are investing in Hawaii and the um, other groups that are promoting solar 
will have to come to Hawaii to say, we want to intervene in this proceedings. We want to protect the solar industry here. We want to promote rooftop solar. And so I expect this to be uh, a major, major proceeding at the Public Utilities my, Commission. My concern is that we may be too small a market and that maybe next era is counting on that, that they can come in and dangle this um, money to shareholders saying, look, we'll pay you more than the stock is listed for presently, and then be able to take it over and then move ahead absolutely obliterating the solar and photovoltaic industry and then moving ahead, leaving it just underseas cable, windmills, and LNG and then all of our goals, objectives, and dreams go down the tube. I, I picture an alternative uh, scenario that's also not that healthy, which is for the next year, the solar industry continues to be on the rocks while we fight the next era proposal. The next era proposal is defeated, and then we move forward. And then the tax credit, the federal tax credit is gone. Right. That's what I thought Hawaiian Electric was counting on, running out the clock. It now seems as if the top management obviously knew about this. Maybe right. not for a year, maybe not for six months, but they've certainly known about it as they've <coughs> tried to come to grips with what should they be doing to allow more of the people in that fi almost 5,000 um, queue 5,000 homeowners trying to hook up their photovoltaic systems in that queue, and then the upper management or top management knew this was in the wings. And from what I, what I would assume would be going on now, because HECO has said we're going to try, Next Era and HECO want to be as much on the same page as possible so that when the theoretical transition occurs, it, it's seamless. And therefore, I would imagine that Next Era is going to start sticking sort of um, management consultants or spies or whatever you call them um, along different sides of the HECO um, train so that we will begin to see different policies developing in different regulatory proceedings. That's already happening on the comments on different blogs. Yes. This I saw that, I think it was the day after this big announcement, bingo like that. Their people were their fixers were on that, putting in the comments. And so they were new names, um, something new, ready, but yep. they were ready. I mean this is a sophisticated company that knows how to take over. Yes. Now what does this do to the Paniolo power? project, um, Dutch Kuiper, and that just really creative, um, wonderful way to create a renewable energy community on the Big Island. He thinks he can reduce rates even if he has to build his own grid. Right. So I, w I would look at what Paniolo Power is doing and say, the days of Helco may be numbered because they're going to show an alternative way of making a grid work. Um, and that would mean that HECO might not be as valuable as one would think if there are going to be these microgrids chipping away at it. But Florida, Florida does not allow that. Right, so. And that's where Next Era is, has made sure that those laws are in place. Right, so I don't know how successful they would be at trying to force the legislature here to change the laws. Mm -hmm. Um, I anticipate there's going to be an effort. Okay. Um, maybe not this year, but depending upon how that proposed sale goes through. I mean, they've done that in Florida, as I understand it, and I, I was told, I'm not sure if this is correct, that there's even a law in Florida that you're not allowed to be off-grid, that you have to be connected? Yes, I read a, a, a case about that, about a person who was sued for being off-grid. This is nuts. Yeah, you have to be connected. You can't have rooftop solar. They make it really difficult. They, they're cutting back on energy efficiency. They 
they want to do all the power, all the control themselves. Um, um, so I picture this as sort of a, a huge fight, but a huge opportunity. Because it's well, talk to me about the opportunity side because I feel very concerned about the the fight and how we can win that. I think there are two ways. One is to put on as much solar as possible in the next year, mm -hmm. to just put up as much solar as possible, and the second is to begin talking about leaving the grid. Now, that is not something currently being pushed by the Public Utilities Commission, mm -hmm. but a large number, and it's hard to document how many people are off-grid in this state because uh, the PUC regulates those entities who sell to people who are on the grid. Um, but there's, there's some evidence that there is an increasing amount of people who are, being dis who are disconnecting from the grid. But isn't that incredibly expensive, Henry? I mean, how realistic is that? I can see pushing ahead with solar like mad. I mean, every rooftop that is in a location that receives enough sun should be pushing ahead for solar. Um, I could see the photovoltaic trying to move ahead, but when Hawaiian Electric said, no, we'll keep you 5,000 waiting, other people just aren't willing to step in and do that. One way of, of sort of leaving the grid is a, is a hybrid model where you have a building and part of the wires in the building are connected to the grid and part of the wires are connected to the rooftop solar and there's no connection between them. Therefore, the PUC has no authority over the lines that are connected only to the and rooftop solar. And those systems solar. are available right those now. Those systems are available now you might call it Ohana electricity because <laughs> you have two systems in one house. And as long as they don't meet, as long as no piece of equipment can go either way, then what is connected to the rooftop solar can only be, uh, you can put on as much solar as you want for that component. Okay. So for example, you might say for the grid, you're going to connect your TV, your refrigerator, your um, air conditioner, and your critical lighting, and then you're going to have all your other systems be connected to a rooftop solar. Okay. And therefore, you don't need permission from anybody to put it up, and you can get your um, federal tax credit for putting it in. Okay. So this is where the photovoltaic and the solar industry needs to come out and say, here's what we can do, here's how we can help, and make it sure that everyone in the state knows that and sees that. And, and um, I mean, if you go down to Ivale, you see that the Costco roof has solar on it. Mm -hmm. And you look at um, Lowe's, which has the skylights. And you go to, um, you look at some of the other buildings, large buildings, and they have no skylights and no solar. Some of the giant warehouses, all you have to do is like carve a hole, basically, in the ceiling, put through either a skylight or a pipe down that mm -hmm. circulates the light f outward. Right. Um, that would be ways to decrease demand. So we need to really continue to rapidly decrease demand, which puts makes it less profitable for a mainland firm to come in and try to gobble up Hawaiian Electric. I see what you're saying. Okay, <clears throat> the more the way that the community can fight back against this, against this out-of-state corporation coming in and taking over and stopping our our move to uh, being one of the greenest states in the nation. The way we can fight back is to move ahead and reduce our use of power, lowering their um, bottom line. Right. Because I think I've heard from a lot of people that have been very upset, very um, concerned. They don't quite know what to do, but the um, I mean, because Henry, it's it's something that um, shouldn't happen. I mean, Hawaii is not for sale, and this corporation thinks it is. We are just not for sale. And and to people who are upset about Hawaiian Electric and think that Hawaiian Electric is slow and um, resistant, uh, Next Era will do you one step, two steps, three steps better. I mean worse, 
they'll be more hostile to the community. Well, and they'll be hostile and far away, removed. Yes, yes. And the homeowner or the business can't be able to talk to anyone that really is here. It'll be press one and then press two and press three and all of this will be outsourced. I imagine a large amount of it would be outsourced so you can call up a foreign country if you have a complaint. And this isn't Hawaii. We, no. we, have, we have set a wonderful goal. We're on the road to it. Hawaiian Electric has hit some bumps in the road and when I call them Darth Vader, I realize, wait a minute, something's moving into town that's going to be a lot darker and more scary than Darth Vader. And then the other thing that's, that's sort of happening right now is that the price of petroleum is dropping. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the Middle East countries are sending a shockwave to the shale oil industry to say, you've been, trying to, you've been putting out all the shale oil, um, all this LNG, and, it's, and we're going to lower the price of petroleum to make you uneconomical. So suddenly, the idea that next era is going to save us money by going to more higher priced LNG relative to petroleum, that makes it even harder to figure out the numbers in their favor. And LNG keeps us tied to fossil fuels, yes. which is not Hawaii. And I think we all need to be very concerned about this proposed purchase by next era. I hope everyone will become involved and weigh in on this. And Henry, I deeply appreciate your work and your leadership and your knowledge. And I thank you all for watching. Please thank you. become involved. We need to keep Hawaii as the green state in the nation. And we're in trouble now. We are seriously in trouble. Aloha to all of you. Aloha.